call. <laughs> Mayor Wester. Yep. Wolf. I'm here. Mola. Speak. Yeah. Here. Ah. Here. Thank you. Here. We have public forum now. Anybody can speak if they'd like to. But I'd like to remind everybody that the general public can weigh in on any agenda item. You just have to raise your hand and be involved in the conversation. Just don't stand up and yell. <laughs> Is everybody clear with that? Consent agenda. Any additions, corrections? Nope. Motion to approve. I'll second. I'll second. Roll call. Uh, yes. Thank you. Yes. Fultman. Yes. Smola. Yes. Reed. Yes. Okay, our final pay estimate for Sunset Drive. Yeah, I just want to do discuss this a little bit. As Lon and I were talking about this more today, just know that, that the little drainage swale there between McCormick and the neighbor house is it was never if it was done, it wasn't done to satisfaction. Lon's still a little concerned about a uh, a little bit of a crown in there as far as, as drainage not, not being a swale. And there's just not very many rock down there at the at the riprap, uh, riprap rock at the outlet. So um, talked with their engineer about that today, and he said, yeah, you, you still probably need to release most of the retainage. He said he would suggest we vote back $2,500 and, uh, and release the rest. But the, this $2,500 could be held until the summer. Bond, so. well, is that $2,500 covered if we had to do something like that? Oh, if we do it ourselves, yeah. Okay, and is that enough to hold back? Yeah. Okay. I thought we had that last payment on tape. Well, we we paid the last payment. Uh, other this retainage is five percent of the project, you know, and, and we hold that for an extra month after, just kind of for these reasons to make sure that everything's paid mm -hmm. and all the bills are paid. And we haven't heard any concerns about bills being paid. So. Okay. And you you the motion to pay the bill minus twenty five hundred. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. No call. Thank you. Yes. Mola. Yes. Reed. Yes. Yes, Fulton. Yes. Okay, hopefully we have a new city attorney. The, the agreement is, is in the packet, and we will just uh, recommend approval of the agreement. We have that motion. So moved. Second? I'll second. Roll call. Fulton. Yes. Ah, yes. Thank you. Yes. Mola. Yes. Reese. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Look forward to working with you. Yeah. Okay, we have a resignation of the building inspector. Yeah, Daryl has, has resigned his his position as uh, Daryl H had resigned his position as building inspector and then also would resign from the planning and planning commission. This would be effective on January fifteenth and the Council should probably take action on the resignation. Any motion to accept those two resignations? I'll grab it. Second? I'll second. Roll call. Reese? Yes. Mola? Yes. Cole? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Uh, no. No. Does that make any difference? <laughs> <laughs> Is there anybody going to replace him? Do we have anybody in the office? Put some ads out. Well, we're going to talk about this now. Um, I want to kind of go through that, what uh, what our building inspector has done. I just want to go through the building inspection process then. It's on page two in the in the council memo. <coughs> kind of walk through that, um, make sure that everybody's aware of the process, see if anything comes to mind about any potential improvements to the process or, or how you might uh, see anything changing. Um, so it's just the process about getting a building permit. So the applicant gets a the building permit application from City Hall, and we give them this packet that has the application on it, has the uh, the zoning regulations for the district. So like if it's an R2 district, they get the R2 regulations in there. There's also some general regulations that apply to all of you. And that's all included in this packet. And then there's also this uh, checklist that's included in there too. And that was in the packet. I just want to go through this with you because it kind of details what it is that we check for because um, again remembering that you know we're checking for zoning compliance we don't have a building code so these are the types of things that we ask for the information when somebody comes in to get a building permit so we know what zoning district they're in and have they found the property plans 
And if there's any questions about setbacks and whether they're legal, we would require that property pins have been found. And we have gone so far from time to time as to require survey. We all know the front yard and the rear yard setbacks. Those are both measured to overhang. Number of stories being one story, two stories, or it could be a story and a half. Um, this is left side or right side yard, again, measuring to setback, or excuse me, to the overhangs, and, and that's got to be at least a minimum of four feet off the property line. If, if they sit on an alley, it's got to be at least 10 feet from the alley. We ask for the height at the feet because we regulate height. If the height's on a main structure, maximum height is 35 feet. Uh, just a couple requirements about, about uh, minimum housing standards. And we actually we have three minimum housing standards. First one is they got to be on a permanent frost-free foundation. But that can be a peered foundation. And you'll see that from time to time with, with manufactured homes. It can be a, a peer foundation. Uh, roof pitch needs to be 3 to 12 or greater. We also have a minimum square footage requirement at 700 square feet for a minimum square footage. Check for open space requirements. And this is, a, this is a, an issue from time to time. It's partly dealing with what the definition of open space is. Because the, the question then is, is whether, basically whether driveways are considered part of open space. And that's it come up here recently, um, really with question. And if driveways aren't part of open space, there's some real issues from time to time, on, especially on red box. Uh, we asked about any easements and whether they encroach upon any known easements. <coughs> Do they enclose their water or the electric or gas meter? And of course, this is one thing that we check for because it's happened before. You know, that people would enclose it. So um, we do ask about that. Does it meet off-street parking requirements? Um, if they're doing it basically in water sewer work, we require tracer wires to be installed now too. So we would ask them and, and go through this requirement with them that tracer wires be installed and whether a state electrical permit is required. Um, we ask about it whether addressing water runoff, and it's just really informational. We don't govern that necessarily, but we want to know about downspouts and that type of stuff and whether they're really putting any water on the neighbors. We've we have always considered and we still consider you know, water on your neighbors a civil issue, but we do, we do want to try to mitigate that during construction. <coughs> Bottom part, then de dealing with the just accessory buildings, about whether they're attached to the primary structure or not. Are they enclosed with four walls? That's the thing about uh, uh, freestanding carports. Basically, it ends up being a prohibition on, pre on freestanding carports. If you're going to have a carport, it needs to be securely attached to your main structure. Uh, height at the peak, maximum height of accessory buildings is 15 feet if they're freestanding. Um, are they any closer to the front lot line than the principal structure? If, if it's a detached garage, it can't be any closer to the front lot line than, the, than what the principal structure is. <coughs> is it a standalone garage on a residential lot? We have some restriction on that too. It's only allowed, uh, allowed in certain areas. And then is the detached garage residential in character? So it's required to, be, to look somewhat residential. And then there's this issue about the vertical corrugated metal site. <coughs> Next page just shows a little bit about, about concrete, what we would do to check on concrete, about thickness of sidewalk and, and driveway back slope. And then a few things on fences about the material and the height, distance from the lot line. And has the neighbor signed off on it if it's going to be on the lot line? The neighbor needs to sign off. Uh, I guess my point just being those are the things that we look for. And as we talk about the building inspector, you know, that's what he's that's that's what they're out there looking for is is these things in particular. And you know, the last issue dealing with siding was kind of, kind of a uh, unique issue because not, it wasn't necessarily a zoning, a traditional zoning issue, it's a lot more of a building material type of issue. And I know the question came up about how <coughs> how does that end up uh, how does that happen before, you know, and at what point does, does it get inspected? So let's, we can still walk through the rest of that on page two. We'll go through some of that stuff about the inspection. Um, so the person has get, got, got this application from me, and, and, and then we can answer any questions. We generally go through what their project is. 
sometimes it can just be that an application shows up because they can just get the application form without any of the attachments. You just get the form off the internet. Okay. Uh, the application, uh, the applicant returns the application then and all that we ask for is that footprint drawing showing the distance to the property lines and, and then the fee is paid, is paid then, it's about $50 for small projects or $100 for projects that are 50000 or more. And of that though, the building inspector is, pay, is paid $40 for each application that's received. Okay, and that then be, becomes an issue from time to time because some of these projects, especially a new new housing construction or anything like that, uh, as Daryl goes around and checks on them, it's, in, it's several inspections um, and you know basically it, it ends up doing a lot of work for 40 bucks. Now uh, sometimes a, a shed is is set out there and you get paid 40 dollars for watching that shed you know so a little it's a little give and take but the, um, the pay is not uh, you know it's not a lot. Um, so then two copies of, I give two copies of this application to the building inspector and the building inspector goes out and checks the site, measures up the setbacks. Um, again, he's just checking for these, zone, these issues that we went through on the zoning code. And then if the application meets the regulation, the building inspector signs it and returns it to me. If it, if it does not meet the regulation, the inspector talks with that applica applicant and inform them what it does not meet the code and tries to work with them, if possible, about ways to make it compliant. But if there are problems that can't, that can't be corrected, <coughs> or if the applicant wants a uh, variance, then Daryl would, would turn the issue over to me and we'd work through um, with, the, with the applicant about a variance process. Or sometimes the answer is just no, because they can't get it fixed, and, they're, and we're not, not able to accommodate what they want. <coughs> Uh, building inspector, if they approve it, it's of course then submitted to the city council, the project proceeds. And then the, the building inspector goes out to those approved projects, he does check on them. And just that at some point in the, in the process, after the construction is basically, basically substantially complete, he's going to sign off on it as a second inspection that has been approved. Okay, well again, that's the, the deal I'll say about the siting issue that we had last time. Uh, so we're look, we're checking for zoning compliance, and we know that the construction's done, and the the building's not getting any bigger, but the siding's not on. And you know it certainly has been that he signed off on the second approval on this, and, and just turned it on because, by and large, we don't regulate uh, a lot of the material. Now, with the siding and then being uh, you know the one issue that we would. Okay, so. Um, I guess I'm just interested in your thoughts on the process. I mean, is there, is there opportunities where you think things could be at all changed to to avoid any of the problems? You know, because my my initial feelings on things are we go through things, and Daryl's been our building inspector for 18 years, and over the course of 18 years, we have had a handful of issues, and that's about it. But we do have problems from time to time, and some of it has, and we've changed this process along the way and added that checklist and this type of stuff. So, um, so has anything been said or done about the corrugated metal? No. Just that it would be a, a planning and zoning issue. We haven't had the planning and zoning issue. My question is, uh, I guess, I don't know how other towns do this, so I'm just throwing this out here. Having a Building inspector on the PMZ, is that a good thing or is that a conflict of interest? Thing? And it may be a good time to separate them out. For us, it, it always worked pretty well because it was very knowledgeable then on both ends of things. That the inspector certainly knew what was going on and as a PMZ member, it was very. Um, Might be a lot of things that we have. The inspector needs to come, come to the meeting. So, yeah. Oh, sure, could be too. You know, instead of that. Instead of him being on the board, mm -hmm. or the yeah, what do you think? He's a lot of you know, I'm not sure. Well, I might, 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 I might
Okay. But so I think there's a trade-off. I mean, conflict, probably. You know. So I, I don't know. And what, on the other hand, you know, you gotta take up the people. You gotta take up the opinions. So I don't think that's a bad idea either. So you're kind of saying that that they should be separate? Is that kind of I think so. I mean, yeah. I, but you know, it's not like I said. Unless you have somebody that's pretty knowledgeable, like you was, you know. Well, you know, you can do. There's a number of ways you can do this too. That if you have a, a meeting like that, we need the building inspector. Why couldn't we pay him? To set in a meeting. <laughs> that way, I mean, that way he is there to help settle issues or any uh, questions that might be on somebody's mind. And I think that way you don't look at the uh, building inspectors giving him a special grant because he's on the PNG. So it would be a whole different idea. I don't know. What do you think, Dave? What do you think? Sounds good to me, Julie. How do we pay him? Do we just pay him a whopping twenty-five dollars and we get to the way? This is the the going rate. Right. Yeah. Uh, Dave, can we ask Dave questions tonight? Hey, we already approved the agreement. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, what kind of experience have you had with? I, I've um, never seen a building inspector be on the P and Z. I think it it has a lot to commanders though, when yeah. you think about it. I don't think it's technically uh, what we would call a conflict of interest because uh, there's other members of the board, so I don't think it's legally uh, prohibited, but uh, on the other hand, the building inspector is providing evidence, so to speak, to, mm -hmm. to the board, and the board is acting as an adjudicator as to whether or not uh, the variance should be granted. So. It would probably be clean for him that, that he's not a member of the board. You mean the PNG to come with recommendations for the council? What we want, what we don't want? As far as what? I mean, is there something you want to change? Um, well, I don't know. I don't know that, there, that there's anything to change, but I do think it's a terrific opportunity to discuss. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't have a lot of experience being a building inspector. So as far as input, I guess, you know, until, I guess we talk. Would this be something where you get some of your local construction guys to deal with this kind of stuff? And we're hoping to tap one of those guys for building inspector, I think. Well, no, that, but I mean, if there's something there, they could take a little more action of saying, hey, maybe this should be in there. Like you say, yeah, that's, I guess that's why I'm getting there. A little of their feedback on it. Yeah, and I mean, uh, just kind of leave the question there. Well, like I said, we know, we know who's all around here that builds homes and does different things, and just ask for some input. I mean, yeah. you know, we're getting a feel of what the contractors got to work with every day. So I don't know. Good idea. Can we send out all the contractors and say, this is what you time? That's what you think. Well, you tell, tell them we're looking for it. I don't know if that would be a problem. I mean, if it's like that size, so. We're idiots. We're forced. I've tried to, I've tried to get up the raise every year, and they say we can't. We've got to give the next council for it. I said, well, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> We'll send out a letter because we get some response. Yeah. yeah. Is there anybody interested, I guess? And we sure can. I, I want to go through a few other things yet on, on this issue, and it's on page three of the memo. And this deals with <coughs> that the issue that Cody brought up at the last meeting about zoning administrators. Okay? She, she said that, in, that we have these two chapters of the code, and one that we have a separate chapter on building permits. And, and then we have a chapter on, uh, on the <coughs> zoning ordinance. Okay, and in the building permits chapter, the building officials are identified, and it's the building inspector and the mayor and city clerk. Okay, and so we've always kind of just administered things along those lines with the three people as administrators. Okay, but our zoning code 
calls for a specific zoning administrator, which I would think that we have never appointed a standalone zoning administrator. Not in 25 years yeah. that I know of. You know, so um, that's an issue, I think, to address about, again, how do you think the uh, the, administ mm -hmm. the ad zoning administrator ought to be? Because in the building permit section, where we have the three people who are identified as building uh, building officials, and it's always me and Daryl and the mayor. And what we find <coughs> out is that Daryl takes care of all of the inspections and doing the outside work, and I take care of all of the paperwork and working with anybody on any special requests, and you know, kind of getting them ready for the application and talking through the the process, and then the mayor can be involved, but he sure hasn't been over history. I think we have been involved in a couple issues with him, that's about it. So, uh, at some point we should designate a zoning, a zoning administrator. Separate from the building inspector. That's the question, I guess. Can they be assigned staff and then have a separate person on the planning and zoning instead of a zoning inspector? Sure, I mean, sure can be. You, you would have your a normal person apply, apply or on the planning and zoning board, okay. and then your building inspector and your zoning administrator would be like a combined one person together. Okay. But they would not be on the PNC board. They would kind of like sit in if they needed to, oversee that end of it, answer questions like you say, but it would be completely separate from the planning and zoning actual board. Just that the practical side of that is that you look through these duties that I've listed there about the zoning administrator that are in our code. A lot of them are administrative duties that I've. So it gets to be a, kind of a sticky issue on that, you know, as far as, again, separating job responsibilities. And if you only have one zoning administrator, it, it, would, it would be strange to have our part time zoning administrator doing a lot of the Work. So, if we did it this way, would that have make a difference? Say you would do the generate the paperwork, do the paperwork, and then whoever this person would come in and review it and okay it. Would, would that seem to be the right way to do that? Or, or well, we would still be doing what Daryl. <coughs> Yeah, and you would still continue to do your administrative part of it. The process that we have probably is not bad. I think it's just, you know, naming of who is the zoning administrator. If there's one, one or two, if we have two, there's always the opportunity then for uh, uh, a disagreement between the two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Although there is, uh, there's a process in place, you know, for hearing, uh, I guess, what do you call it? Appeals of the zoning administrator's decision, and that goes to the Board of Adjustment. Can't we make the city clerk the zoning administrator? Oh, you could, but I don't know that you really want to do that either. You know, unless you want to have a building inspector and then you have a zoning administrator. You don't want to pay anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Who would you recommend? Yeah, and, and I don't know because the practical side of things again is that I'm probably going to work with the applicant a lot up front and answer questions. You know, I'm, I'm the person that's going to see about that. Why don't we do it the way I do this one? And, and we sure can. I mean, you know, the mayor and the building zoning inspectors. Yep. You know, and I mean, it's a matter of identity is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> and I. I'd be fine. You know, as I think, yeah, like the, I think practically, you know, you have to deal with the administrative part of it anyway. Mm -hmm. The mayor is basically the third person like that needs to be involved. Yeah. Like you said, you've never had too many issues. No, not too many. But <coughs> but if there's an issue and it ends up back with the city council, you know, there's an argument that says that ought never happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, it it ought to be able to be a bit. Yeah. 
I still feel with the building inspector that should be something that is not on the mm -hmm. Yep, we can. That's just me. Right. No, I agree with that too. Uh, that we just go that way and then still leave the yeah. administration like right. we have in the past. That's right. That's, that's what I'm thinking. But, but yeah, mm -hmm. the zoning mm -hmm. person needs to be a separate person than from the building inspector yeah. in my book. Yeah. Yeah. So do we need to instruct the city clerk to put the other paper for a building inspector? So just want to advertise for the building yeah, inspector? Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah. sure. What kind of motion about the way it's got? Okay. Second. 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 Roll call. Okay. Roll call. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Oh. Yes. 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 I'll put a notice out there about these two. Yes. Okay. Let's talk about the concrete disposal. The concrete disposal. So did everybody know where this was at about? about <coughs> Uh, Gene and Verla Schrader's farm south of town. So it's a little pit that's on the south side of the east-west gravel road. Okay. I think you've got that down. Well, so you're not going to win rent. I no mean, kids? I mean, you're going to have a, a loader out there in a pit. Yeah. So I was asking Dave about, about some opinion on that. He just, can you go through that a little bit, Dave, on what you're thinking? Well, uh, we will have to go through a permit process with the DNR and probably uh, over the gravel pit we might have to check in with the mining inspectors for the state of Iowa make sure that they agree with the way that landowners are uh, rebuilding or replacing the permit. I understand it could be an abandoned gravel pit or a former gravel, gravel pit. <coughs> and then the city would have to have uh, the environmental people from the DNR approve this as a place to dispose of I don't think it isn't uh, it isn't difficult, but it has to be done. You can't just start the process mm -hmm. and then come in and ask for the permit <laughs> afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. They get a little fussy about stuff like that. My son-in-law was talking about this, and he said if there's water in the bottom of the pit, you have more issues. Uh, yeah. If you get yeah. yeah. dry, mm -hmm. there's one have no problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you can't have if there's water involved, then you have to have the, the water people from the DNR involved with it too. Uh, also, you've got to watch out for anything that's not uh, ferrous, any iron and steel, that type of thing. So there's issues like that that would have to be ironed out. I don't know if the concrete you get, does it usually have re rebar in it or not? Yeah, I put a lot of work. It might have to be crushed out. That's not good. I mean, once you start down that road, there's a lot of issues mm -hmm. with how to place it in that yeah. pit. But like Jerry says, it's a win-win deal. So yeah, it, it ought to be a way to work. Well, that and for what, for what it costs to push the dump back all the time. But yeah. this, I mean, this would save us a couple thousand dollars a year to, oh, yeah. to have somebody come but push they also, back. But, but they also said, like, uh, well, Chewy or those guys, you know, being the clerk there, they also have a grind the concrete, you know. Mm -hmm. and if there was enough there, they would run that through. And then, of course, then you have iron to separate, which we could sell to you. Or else they're, they're always dumping out at uh, the other pit, you know, to south of town, you know, a mile over. It's a little farther, but then we wouldn't have to bury it either. Yeah. But this would be up to the landowner to get all this stuff done. We don't want to get involved in this. Well, it depends on how you, I, I sent Scott a copy of the code that we would be concerned with, and if the city's involved, I think we have to have some type of either an easement and, or a lease. Uh, we don't want any ownership, obviously. But yeah, that was my initial reaction was the more that the uh, property owner <coughs> could take on, the better this would be for the city. Because that's what, once, once the municipality becomes involved with what, we have to do it right. We have to have the right permits and the right blessing. Whereas the landowners, particularly agriculture, farm owners tend to get away without having one of these more paperwork. Yeah. You know, it, it just seems like obviously <coughs> we're involved in this somehow when we put a sign out there that says concrete is uh, Yeah, yeah. You know, and, uh, and also becomes a liability issue for insurance for the landowner. Well, and for the city. Yeah. 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 We just have to move the sign down. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
but I think we'd have to address them with the capacity to go to the corner and then, you know, to get in there somehow. I just really want to know if the council was interested in in seeing this happen, and if so, if we'll work with the, with the property owners. And mm -hmm. Well, I think he needs to, the guy that this right and needs to check it out and see yeah. what with the and see what they can do. Well, and we will do. We'll yeah. we'll be looking at that, calling DNR and seeing what what would need to be done. So, How long do you think it's going to take to fill that? Two years it's going to be full anyway. So, I mean, it ain't a long term deal for the city. Yeah. Two years and it's going to be full. <coughs> Look at how Hancock just take the truck out of there instead of dumping it or just take it there. Yeah. There's no reason. The city out is just talk to tell Hancock to do that and get right. the city out. Yeah, exactly. yeah. That's let them dump their trucks down there and let, let contractors take it down to the dump. Yeah. We don't have nothing to do with it. That's between right. Hancock and them other people in the city and the We're out of the loop that way. So how, how much of the rubble down there comes from Hancock versus right? I'd say 75 to 80 percent of it is Hancock. Well, it won't take the day. Oh. That's pretty bad. You know, yeah. liquid cement that they got. They can't legally dump that. Oh. Well, I knew they couldn't. They're doing it, but they can't legally dump that. Thank you. Yeah. We've already danced with the DNR and lost. We don't want to do that again. Seems they're not good either. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'll talk to the property owner and really encourage them that that would happen. We just got to stay out of it. Yeah. Um, if it becomes, if they're interested in pursuing it further, we can still talk to the DNR, the DNR more about it. Well, but then yeah, just can't you just cross that out on our sign that there's no transfer private? Well, you sure could, but not if we're not if we would have allowed private dumping. Then. You know, we'd still allow for the private folks to do that just in Hancock down there. Right? Down to uh, trade. Mm -hmm. Hancock and dump and those other guys would just go right with the one now. The other guys got rod out, not Hancock doesn't have any rod in there. No. It's just an extra stuff. So that would be a yeah. 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 yeah, so you keep it out of water. Very good. Okay, Scott's looking for permission to put the recording on the Website. Yeah, I tell you that if if we want to video the uh, meetings, it's probably a good thing to put it out there to the public. If it goes on the city's website, we'd like council permission for that to happen. So you want a motion to approve that? Or just want to that? Yeah, if we can, if we can do that. So you want motion? Yeah, I'll make it. Second. Second. Roll call. Thank you. Yes. Mullet. Yes. Well. Yes, please. Yeah. Good night. Discuss this just a little bit more then, because we'll we'll get this on the on the website. You know what what'll happen is we'll put a it'll go on YouTube and we just end up with a link on the city's website so that you can you can watch that on YouTube. But as I start to think about these issues more, just more issues kind of pop up. I just want some need some guidance. <laughs> that at some point we have likely have a resolution to approve that. That it would uh, just me uh, th starting third one, third paragraph down. So we'd resolve to uh, that the the clerk would be responsible for making the video and uh, further resolve that the. Uh, the audio and video council meeting be, be disseminated through the website, okay? And that the audio or video needs to be posted within so many days of the council meeting. <coughs> and I, I think that's appropriate and we ought to uh, have a requirement there, but at the same time, uh, you know, things happen and it always can't be posted the next day. But, you know, in my mind, I would have every intention of having it done quickly, but if if that were to say seven days, I'd just kind of like that. It's just, uh, again, having uh, opportunities not to, uh, that I, you know, you're covered on uh, having any technical problems or any scheduling issues. So, so to, to put a consistency on it, so we may meet on the first and third Mondays 
So if we have them posted by the second and fourth Monday, that would show a consistency that they, everybody wants to choose a pattern and be there instead of just not being there. Mm -hmm. You know, I, the intent, the intention would be to have it up quickly. You know, you know as I'm sure people are <laughs> interested shortly after it happens. But uh, like I said, just problems can occur, and I don't, I sure don't want to uh, fail to meet a requirement because we have some problems. Um, the next one is more of a question. Uh, there's some options about form about public access channel, and you know whether you whether you would like to be able to run that on the public access. Channel. And and issues about uh, Facebook, you know, this is kind of the idea of we put the link on our website, people can come look at it on our website. The other side is more pushing it out to the public <coughs> through public access or, or Facebook. And there certainly is an argument that says, no, you fulfill your obligations. You just put it on your website, and people know where you are. But I, would, you know, like that have you know, think about that question about whether you'd like to do any. Proactive pushing through the through Corn Belt or through Facebook. Do you have a spot to have it on Corn Belt? Yeah. No. If 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 they're running the same thing like they did for churches, it didn't cost us. I I look at it uh, if you move it on our city one, that gets people to look at our city, mm -hmm. the website, and they look at other things. I mean, I don't know if that's you trying to focus on mainly the local people anyway. And if you want to go, you know, it, the word will get out to where it's at, so it's up to. It seems to me that Facebook is the age, the age we live in. I mean, the fact is, is they're putting it on there, right? They're putting it on Facebook. Yep. We can always put the link on Facebook, though. I mean, always put that you can go to the website to get it. Yeah. Rather than having a right. thing on Facebook, you just put the link. Mm -hmm. You put the link to YouTube. Say that. Think so. Well, and that's kind of the question, though. Well, is um, again, it's pushing the information out versus having <coughs> the public come to the website. And there certainly is an argument that says it's okay that they come to the website. Maybe I'd uh, try the website first and see if too many complaints that they might. Well, and yeah, but by rights there shouldn't be any complaints. If somebody come, comes up and says, I'd like to see that, you have to put on the website and stuff on there. Well, we can put on Facebook, you know, to see the meetings, please go to the website. Mm -hmm. And I'd likely do that through the newsletter anyway. They were gonna, right. they'll be, uh, they'll be right. on. I like the, the idea of having traffic to the website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can put the link on. Say, you know, if it's on Facebook, you're saying this is where it's for it, then it still draws them to the yeah. city's website. Yeah. <coughs> Do you update that regular? Where they can see more of what's happening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll say uh, maybe not as regular as what we'd like. Yeah, I would tell you that the updating the web page is just an, another one of the things that's done, and Kate, Kate, Kate does it, but it is. You know, it's done at the end of the day. If you got some time, you know, it it oftentimes doesn't end up being real high priority because it, we're going to hold our feet to the fire about putting a link up there. You done. Yeah. It shows you got nothing behind. Yeah. Are you going to make resolutions the next council meeting? Yeah, I sure can. But I want to go through these next couple points yet too because <coughs> this this will happen uh, from time to time, and we need to know how to address it when it does happen, you know, if people do want a copy of the file. This would say, of course, they're public, um, and if they want a file that's small enough that we can email it, that I would email it free, if, if they want a video file, it gets to be too big to email, they get it for free if they bring their own media, or if the city provides media, it's like we'd be providing anything else. We have a general policy on anything we provide to the public is cost plus 20%. You should be able to put it on Dropbox. Just drop it in Dropbox and they can get it. I suppose. That, that stuff I've got pretty good at. It'd be easy I need to, to learn. Yeah. And about retention policy. 
this would say maintain it for a year. Um, after a while, you know, it gets to be pretty large, and then you have storage systems. So uh, there's nothing, there's no state mandated requirement about re about retainage, and after one year, it's uh, how long you have to retain the closed session stuff. So it's just uh, the only thing that I have a uh, even a little rule of thumb about. And the last one there that members of the public are always welcome to the town meeting using their personal equipment. And I think it's just want to let everybody know know that anyway. If somebody wants to show up at the court, you could. Everybody all right with that? Yeah. Well, sorry. We can have to think about it. Okay. Thank you. That helps. Okay. Who was the uh, yeah. Deal? Pardon me? Do you have a better deal? We do have two options. And the one for the application was four hundred and ten dollars less, but I would tell you that uh, I was con consulting with, with Ben Wallace and Jim Millenocker. They're, they're just really pleased with with the work of this aquatic environment consultants last year. And the one thing that they're able to promise us that the other one can't is that they can do the job in one day. And the other one, this would be a, uh, just a much bigger job than, than what they could say that they could handle. Uh, we're guaranteeing that it would all be done in that same day. Total cost on, on AEC, and that's the same one we used last year, is 19400 Last year's price was eighteen nine forty, so it's up four hundred sixty dollars. Now the really good news out of that is that uh, the DNR has come up with fifteen thousand dollars to put towards the herbicide application. So okay. it's just the uh, four thousand four hundred dollars that would be split amongst the partners, okay. and so it's the city and the LTA. In fact, county said they'd participate. Okay. People like it. Oh, yeah. Has the Black Hawk Lake Association board looked at this? Just, no, just Jim. And the, because the city would be the contracting authority. They're just looking at this saying they'd like to, like to get it in place. So, uh, know where they're at. You know, the argument was you got to work on permits. There actually is no permit anymore. So, because the because the DNR is the applicator. Okay. Anyway, I would recommend that AEC is the same company. So I don't want to say that. We know what you got there, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, they've been through it once, and mm -hmm. they did a good job as far as I'm concerned. You know, that's what I was on over there. Every week. Okay. Every member's happy with it. Yeah. yeah. department needs first because we can get everything she wants. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no,
It's uh, 191,000. <laughs> 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 But we we do have those numbers. I can get them pretty quick. Probably two thousand. How much? It would be about two thousand. Per month. Per month. That's only uh, four or five months. Rick, is there a way we can get Mike to work more hours? So that you don't get behind in the spring? Uh, Mike uh, worked five hours less than Eric did this year. Or five weeks less than Eric did. And he's working less and less every year for us. So we're going to have to Good either job. jack him up or something. And what's an issue in the spring when he's not here? I know. Not a good one. Because Eric is a darn good employee, and I don't want to lose Eric getting frustrated about something. He's the best one I've seen down there in all the years I've been here. He's a good one. Never complains, just works. Stays on the move. <laughs> rare. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. I don't even have. I want you to know, Scott added the flash pad on mine. Yes. <laughs> Gosh. Do you want to call, walk through this stuff on our departmental needs assessment, Bruce? And just for, for each one of the departments, what you see, Council, is uh, uh, we have this vehicle and equipment inventory for each of the departments, so that's on page 16, and, and this is going to have the department head uh, rate their equipment. That rate the condition of the equipment. Note anything that that you know for for condition or needs to be addressed. It also then has mileage or hours on. So you see the mileage and hours on each one of these pieces of equipment. Next page then kind of does the same thing for the facility. Gives gives a condition rating of the facility. You know, ask about capacity. Are they are they too big too small? And then what's happening with annual maintenance costs? And then whether there be any comments. Um, and then the one that, that, that they'll be most interested in talking about is page 19 then for each one of the departments you'll see that uh, the departmental needs assessment we're going to be talking about uh, budget priorities for this year and for upcoming years. <coughs> Do you want to walk through those Rudy? Sure Scotty. Mr. Well, we we know that trade in has been lawnmower trade in every year. So that's a good deal. Well, we never got our mulch for the playground last year, which we need to do because there needs to be replaced, that's not replaced or added to it. We didn't get that done. We didn't get any additional stuff. No. The only stuff that's down there is from the original project. And it needs to be taken care of. Well, they do eat it. I don't know, it just disappears. Oh. And it, you can start seeing all the rocks here. It's just we a got to play it. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So, how far is that shit? Minnesota. Yeah. Didn't it come from Minnesota? Well, didn't that right. the truck walk there on the way back to yeah. the rocks? It was a reaper look, and then we had the Walking the wheels in it. Walking the wheels in it. Yeah. What Chester has, what is. Yeah. 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 That's what that is. Okay. Well, then they used to have valves to put it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This, in this case, it would be half a load. Oh. It's not. It's just filling in in areas. It's yeah. not reading. And the kiosk for the historic sites. Where did you say they were, were going to go? So we'll do historic kiosk at Speaker Park, Stone Piers. And uh, and Witches Tower, okay. And we did get the uh, Sac County Endowment grant to fund half of that. And 
uh, the Historic Preservation Commission's kind of heading that up as far as the design of the, of the kiosk. And that's some you know, lots of nice comments on the one down there by the chief, and that they would all be dismissed anyway. <coughs> And splash pad, and yes, I added that on to Ruth's priorities, just to make sure that it, it stays in the mix. We need to continue to talk about that. That hundred twenty thousand dollars is is probably where we end up on price. That's where we'll be talking with people about as we continue to go out in front of it. Is, uh, is hundred twenty thousand. The design actually is uh, a different design than than what we had looked at, uh, at originally. It's a different company. But this different company was able to meet meet the things that the committee really liked, like a a big concrete pad that basically has an outline of a lake in it, and and it, it gives the uh, again it's just the outline of a lake. It's another way to, to tie this into the, to being water related. Well, Scott, can you say something? Um, are you is the council then going to look at that in the budget for next year? Because they didn't get a grant because they didn't have any city support, and I just wondered if 2017, if, if you wanted to kind of address that again, look at that again. That's what we had talked yeah. about. It was yeah. you know, I mean, I know they've made mistakes, but they're volunteers. They're not getting paid anything. And they're not professional planners, so you know, I, I just think they need to move forward with it, and I'm hoping that the council will see fit to help them. At least so they can get grants, you know, it really cuts their legs off if they're not able to get any grants. And I, I don't remember what you gave for the playground, but I know that you helped out with that. So it was about 35 or 30 mm -hmm. yeah. You know, just for the for the people in the crowd, what what we're doing tonight is 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 kind of the start of a budget process for us. What we do is have all of our department heads go through and work through their inventory and then work towards this needs assessment about what it is that they want to do. So this is how we introduce things that come to the budget, budget discussion for next week. Or you'll hear a couple things for two or three years. You know. Water pad or something like that, and the mini golf that has to be repaired. The oh. Water, you got that done? Water. Wasn't that, you said the water was leaking out or something? Or was that something else that was broke? Mike was supposed to fix it, wasn't he? Oh, the, the pond. pond. Yeah, the pond. Yeah, that, that needs some attention because the wall is caving in. So we'll have to talk really nice to mom. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and say no. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you might get a free a lot of this. Yeah. <laughs> you might get a free golf. I give you some free mini golf. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so on the benches, then, Ruth, would we look at these as possible memorial benches? Good. Good. And they'd be the same type of concrete benches that we have all around town? Yeah. And then the more concrete pads. What do you, uh, I mean, we're talking, that we have to plan two, three years ahead of time, that the reservation of that part has to mm -hmm. That we have to, probably would have to eliminate some sites and see how, how many, we're going to have How many can we get for 20,000? I don't, I don't have any idea. I know. The, one, the ones that we did, I don't remember what we did last year. was about that much, maybe a little bit more. Was the uh, ones we did was what we did last year. That's all the For all of them? For all the concrete, yeah. I mean, the whole project's a lot more than that. That was just kind of. Yeah, but the concrete was 20000 for the 20 pads. Sounds about right. Well, it seems awful reasonable. But yeah, we did it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> did you? Uh, I believe we did. Oh, and I suppose you got ripped off. <laughs> <laughs> She's yeah. tough tonight. I'm going to raise my hand. She's all done. I'm going to raise my hand. 
That was 20. <laughs> I can't remember anything that they've done. That's 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 maybe they're supposed to be a one I would say that's my number, Terry. Maybe, oh. maybe, 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 maybe they're supposed to be a one in front of that. Could be. Oh, okay. Ruby, what section would you be? I don't know. I was talking to an answer about that. Yeah, Terry. Yeah, you're right off. Yeah, what if we did put it right across where the street where all the gravel is? Right across the street. Right across the new tag. The new tag. The new tag. Looking at oh, you mean the where you usually can? Yeah. <laughs> we would have to we would have to eliminate some sites in there because they're already getting too small. Yeah, I know they are. Hmm. Yeah. That's a and, that's and, a it, and it almost alleviated a lot of water mm -hmm. too because they flood so easily. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh, we'll oh. have to think about it, but the water's uh, run the wrong way. You're gonna have to change it. Way the water runs in, take oh. take it to the east. Okay. I mean, we're, it's it's draining west right now. Yeah. But if you raise that up, then it will be well. Uh, you'd have to really do some thinking about that. Sure. You might have to dig them down if anything, dig it out. Yeah. Dig the, dig the white rock out and put the pad in, and I think. Then you'd be driving over concrete instead of mud, really. Because I mean, it gets like well, we can make it just like the pad that's there, but <coughs> yeah, it, 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 it's going to be a considerable amount of dirt work again. Because oh, okay. I mean, to me, there's like six inches of fall from the very west driveway all the way across those pads. Mm -hmm. There's only six inches of fall, if I remember right. <coughs> we had some days around this summer. That, that was and we can make it run the other way, but we'd have to do some canal work. Yeah. Well, we could look at the sites all over, I guess. And you you know, could come up with a plan and then start the longest winter when we're not working quite so hard. But if you're if you're in eliminate the sites, then you got to redo all the water, all the electrical, right? There's the water department and there's the electrical department. End of story. <laughs> <laughs> I, can see you're not I can see you're not paying for the water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we look forward to a plan which is it really makes a difference on the money coming in if we fix it up, right? Uh -huh. yeah. They will come. You bet, because these campers are getting so big. My gosh, when you when they come in 40 foot long with five slide outs and, you know. So is there any merit, any merit to doing away with your C section? Uh, I'd love to. Where are you going to put the carnival? Your backyard? Always. Come in over. I'll reserve them for the weekend. You know, I, I don't want to make it nice for the carnival. <laughs> 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 okay. You know, we talked about doing something over there, but, yeah, but what, I mean, the way they jam in there, I, <coughs> they're live. Huh? They're live. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> they're live. Yeah. Give it some thought, please. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Right. okay. Is that it? Remind me of the You did fine. I learned from you, Josh. Yeah, you are. <laughs> 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 that won't get you very far. Okay. Are we done? Yeah, we're done. Okay. Royce? Oops. That's your paper. Yeah. No. Wow. Well, is fun. that mine? I think it is. I got mine in. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's from a, that's from the last fire department. Oh, yeah, that is mine. Yeah. Thank you. I stepped that along. I didn't know if he'd have a new map for us. Okay. Tonight or that one. Okay, Royce, I got the seat you want to get. I'd like to see what I might read. Well, that's Ruth he really wants me to have. So, <laughs> so uh, actually, on our, uh, we anticipate the sale of two of our police vehicles this next coming year. So I was hoping to use some of the revenue to offset a new, to purchase other new ones. So basically, all I had asked for was for half of the truck, which we had set half aside for last year. Purchased a, uh, three new portable radios. One we purchased in 
2008, it's only eight years old, so, uh, so I think we can make the one work. A new radio for our patrol vehicle, the one in it, about 20 years old, it doesn't work just right anymore. And uh, this next one, I'm not, cell phone. what's that? What do you use? Cell phone. It'll pick up some of the times, it'll transmit some of the times, it's nothing but static. You know. <coughs> so use your walkie-talkie. Then the 2013, the vehicle we have has a light bar on it. Well, they had to drill a hole in the roof to uh, run the wiring up through it. And I, that's going to keep it. And we're going to have this vehicle long term. I'd like to actually have it fixed properly, welded, and kind of painted a little bit so just for the longevity purpose of it. And then uh, our in-car camera in the 2013 no longer functions. And it's out of warranty, so I was hoping to just get a new one of those. We could apply for a grant, but we've already applied for that grant and used it towards the purchase of other things. So. Uh, as far as vehicles go, so they have those two Dodges, and uh, actually, point of order, the ramps, they're not Dodges anymore. I'm not sure what through bankruptcy, they put themselves off their ramps. Point taken. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so we have these two ramps. <laughs> 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 and, anyway, the, the idea that we've been floating around is that we take the, the RAM that's to be retired, it's 2013 RAM, and get that changed over to be the administrative vehicle. We have that Ford Explorer, and we have a charger. Both of which need thrown away. And, you know, Cold. just the idea is they, yeah, those are, have, will they really come to the end of their life, and if we can have an administrative vehicle, we keep this other pickup around, get that changed over, and use that as the administrative vehicle, but we would keep it outfitted for police, as in, still has lights and radio. Yeah. So yeah, we have to, we'll have different lights, and we're not going to have a light bar on top of it at They do periodically need a third vehicle. Or something. Mm -hmm. And Ruth really wants me to have this now. <laughs> <laughs> Camera, is that a how old, how old is that thing? And it was bought in 2014, so it's four years old. And we've already put more, uh, bought other parts for it, and it just it hasn't worked right since we've had it. Hmm. And the other one works perfectly. Same camera, same everything. Say 2014, that's only two years old. Yeah. Okay. With a one year warranty on it. <laughs> is the camera more of a priority because that keeps the English? In a lot of trouble. Well, uh, yes, and uh, actually, it's something that when we have our vehicle up there, they've installed for it, so I'd like to have it for them. But we do, we do have body cams, by the way, too. But yeah, the new car camera is a necessity. It makes the lawyers happy, doesn't it? Yes, and protects liability too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just pulling out people's business. <laughs> 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 They just have different recollections. Bill. Transmission loss is at 2.64 percent. I called Wofford and haven't heard nothing back. And this contract states return both original exhibits to the above address within 75 days of the date stamped above this or this exhibit shall be known void. 75 days is last Monday. So back and see what Wofford says. I called Mean and Mean said uh, a lot of towns didn't sign it. They sent every one of us in the station. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'll wait to see what to do over here. But they provide losses up to 7%. And by stating that 
the losses of 2.64% is irrelevant to our cost. So it doesn't mean nothing. I, I, I told Walt I didn't like to leave it the way it is at 7%, but they're adding that one sentence. That's why we have to change it every year. So, so your cost will remain the same. So. Of course, if you're small, but the more likely you guys probably will be. So. Do you want to talk page 24, Scott? Yep. Unless you had anything on going to page 23. Okay. Yeah. Everything's checked off the way it always is. I got a question, but then I thought we had a bunch of this to replace that 10 car with uh, the red coming. Right, that's for this year. Okay. Right. I'm actually doing the, the bidding right now. Okay. Do you want to go through that here real quick, Bill, Bill, what we were talking about today? Well, this price is coming a little higher. Well, you're looking at, um, uh, right now we have an F350 and it drags that bumper to the ground with the back on it and uh, the trailers and such. And Jeff and uh, Cameron would like to bid an F550. It's a heavier chassis, and it's also dual wheels in the back, so it's made for full trailers. And um, basically, uh, SL, which is the bottom line of the four, you're, you're, you're talking at around forty-five thousand just for that pickup, the cab and chassis. The fiberglass body, we paid, I think it was ten eight, uh, ten years ago. So I'm looking at that being around. 12, 14 probably. Haven't got any bids on it yet. Mm. So we budgeted 45,000. Well, that's just going to cover the cost of a cab and the chassis. But that's the high prices have gone up. On the, the priority on the we buried a lot of we buried a lot of lines in town. We placed the primary lot to get us north. We we barely barely are ever out of power. Right. It's and we need to keep doing that because there's a lot yet to do yet. That's actually number four. So do you do that tomorrow? Or do you contract that out? We we that's one we bid out mm -hmm. showing construction and doing quite right. a bit of it. What would it take for you if you had to do it? Could you do it? We show and bring down six guys, and sometimes you have 12. Farm is born, aren't it? Almost all of it, Jerry. Yeah. You just can't, you can't dig anymore. We're saying we, have, we don't have a farm no. this but, but to give you guys an idea, Leroy brings down minimum six guys. And then um, his last year's job was a lot more time consuming than what anybody thought. And there was a week or so he brings out six more guys. So we, you have a lot of manpower there. How long does a typical project like that take? Was that lasting two months? Now? I didn't <laughs> it was quite a oh, while. Oh, I don't know. Quite two months. They were here a long time. They encountered a lot of trouble when they were <coughs> They had one, one job wanting it. They brought it in. He, he was lining up for the job and they brought 12 guys and two crews in and they finished it in two weeks. Like you know, what we normally do, we, we pretty much stay at that same footage every time we bid. How much can you get done for 80000 Jerry, the three-phase line, you're probably looking at 45000 a mile for one mile. A single phase, you're, you're up in the, probably the 25000 range. But you got to realize, too, that if you go out and bid two miles, you're going to pay a lot more than that 40000 yeah, yeah. That's why I was wondering, 80000 is thinking about what And that's when uh, we did the Phoenix Project. That's what the engineer's estimate was per mile for three phase and single phase. So if you can, if you can do your in bulk, you save a lot of money. But the FEMA job came in at you know at fifty cents for the dollar. About half price. Because you did so much, you know. So you really that's how I do my underground. You don't want to do a little bit. You want to mm -hmm. save up and do a big chunk because you're getting yeah, mobilization expensive. Getting yeah, better rain all the way around. So. Just everything. And the contractor's going to go out for those big jobs. They, you can't blame them. They got to get your guys busy. Yeah. Um, but you can see that, like, number one coincides with number three. 
number one is that's just for the engineering to go out to itemize the per unit cost, the engineering work, ready to go out for bid. Is what that to cover. I called up BGR and I said, what would that I asked him for that what they he gave me the thirty five. So you get a better rate getting a bid in the wintertime now? Yeah. 100%. That's what I thought. I, I love it in January. <coughs> and really, those transactions are going to be what they probably 2018. Yep. You're looking and I understand by the time this budget comes around, there's too many. Yep. That's what I'm, that's what I'm looking at, yeah. Okay. And, and, and there is some money in the current budget. Though. Right. I know there is some budget for that, but the for the little project, yeah. yeah. For a small, you know, and even thousands really isn't going to help a whole lot. So what we've done before, like say, if we were at eighty thousand on underground, that that was the contractor price for the uh, for the contractor, mm -hmm. and we pro we supplied all of, uh, all the materials. <coughs> right. Was in addition to that, we use the, we use our inventory mm -hmm. on the line I budget <coughs> for buying the material. Okay. But we buried lines. I've got lines that we buried for for thirty years now. Mm -hmm. Never had a problem. So you're still going to be looking at a, at a 2018 project, probably. If you, if you guys start, like, I pull your next budget years in July, mm -hmm. 17, 18, you're probably looking at that next January 2000. Right, make bid. No, 2018, right, so that you can repeat bid. Mm -hmm. And also, it gives your engineer time to line up his job. Sure. But yeah, that's, that's how far out you're looking for. Wow. And the poles are really, I mean, they're getting bad from the poles. We spent 95% of our time in town this year. So we're not getting out the country very often. That's what we're going to be doing this week here when it warms up. Tree trimming and maintenance like that. But yeah, you're looking, and the more, the farther out you plant, the better it is. Yeah. You're going to get the better bids, you're going to get those years going to like it more. Well, I understand. Yeah. No. So do you think you'll have to replace some of these poles before we get into a, to a big bid? I mean, I guess. I can up. almost guarantee you. We've had, well, we've had a fall over already. Okay. Just from wind. Yeah, we had a pole that got hit, hit by a tractor south of town, and I went and checked the next pole south, and it was just head right on the bottom. So we're lucky the pole we hit was a it was a new team of pole, a new style of pole. Yeah, FEMA deal was a blessing. Oh, you betcha. <laughs> I hate to say it, but it was. You bet, you bet, you're better off being lucky than good. And we got a good system. Yeah. And that allowed us to concentrate all of our time. We buried the primary that was going bad for so long. But you still have to maintain it. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we're off the hardware hard all the time. Right. So if you had to replace a few poles, you could do that. Yeah, that's what we've been doing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but yeah. if you find a couple bad ones, you get us to our next point. You betcha, yeah. Okay. But that, that's what the, Jerry said there. You're looking at 2000, January 2018 is where you go up for bid. But yeah, this, this is the study realizes is the bid packet ready to go up for bid. And then the council, when you do that, you're going to know exactly what you, you're going to do and mm. accept or reject all bids, too, if you want. You know? But just for for planning purposes, I think that's what. Another thing is our our rate for through the year 2015, we got pretty good rates, you know, stable rates, where you're not going to look at you know high cost and wholesale power increases. So that's another way to the timing's good. Plus, like I said, we. God, I hate to say, you can't stop the reburying this water because there's lots of reburying that you know, in town. You gotta keep reburying water. Because coming out of the sub, the water was 1977. So, it helps lay in gravel. Water like dry ground. Like flood trees and all that stuff. Like that. RDC when they first started there and they buried five miles from here and they probably got the second five miles buried and they had trouble with the river. You betcha, you know. We had the same problem here. We we buried <coughs> off the golf course and that wire all went bad. The new wire is so much better than the old wire. Mm -hmm. Just 
evolution, you know, see where it's going to be. Okay. That's pretty much the system. Can you, can you talk about your trencher real quick, real Bill? And yeah, are you looking at budgeting that for next year, or is this in year two or three? Well, I would recommend God is just I'm just number one, and then sticking with the replacing the underground. Mm -hmm. You use the mini excavator a lot. On, I'm telling you, you can't get anywhere anymore. The new house on North State Road, we brought the mini excavator to dig in the server. So I would, of everything on there, number one should be a priority. And, you know, to, to also maintain and replace the underground in the town. John asked me about all our park faults are all fixed. You know, everything we know about that went bad is all fixed. So the last line we had that we broke was from the Laney's uh, shop back here across the hill. So I didn't want to do it because I didn't want to bust Main Street the first. <laughs> so I didn't want to be the first one to bust Main Street. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so we put that off for six years. <laughs> and we went through there and never did nothing. So all faults are fixed. Thanks, Bill. Which is kind of nice. Yeah. Ron. You don't need that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet he does. I'm just going to elaborate on, like Bill said, that mini X was a good investment because every, every time we dig anymore, that's what we're using. And, uh, <coughs> but if you're looking on page 25, we put one heck of a lot of hours on the back though. I was kind of surprised at that. Uh, actually, 100 hours more than normal, I believe it was. Pretty close to that. Mm -hmm. A lot of it had to do with pumping um, in the spring. That tractor, you know, was running 24 hours a day. <coughs> but uh, other than that, I mean, my equipment's in pretty good shape. If you go to page 26, <coughs> everything's looking good there, except for well three. At some point, you're going to have to address that well. Uh, we know we got a hole in the casing, and it pumps a lot of air. We only use it about one month out of the year, and the only reason I do that is because it pumps so much air into the system. Um, DNR would like us to use it at least once a month, a week a month, mm -hmm. and we don't just because. So that's something maybe, you know, down the road, I'm not asking for anything on that because it, it still is working. Um, just so that everybody understands on the council, that is our, our only backup well. We have that one down on the bike trail, we run that one all the time. And then this one's in Speaker Park, that's the only backup we have. Yeah. The cost to fix it? No, he probably thought we'd have full casing, put a new casing in. So you're looking at hundreds of thousands. How big is How I big believe that's an ten inch, I believe it is. They yeah. can't put a one inch bag. Uh, no, right. We're redoing yeah. all the pumps and everything, you know. I don't know. Because they're kind of specific how they screw down in there to seal that all yeah. up. So, but, uh, and guys, I mean, we can make this last a long time unless the DNR comes in and tells us we got to run it every all the time. They've been suggesting that. I wouldn't say they're suggesting that. <laughs> so, with that being said, uh, lift stations are doing real well. Um, on on uh, number 13, the one we had so many problems with, we uh, sat down, sent out a couple letters, we sent them out two different times, and that we have not had a problem since. So um, that might have cured our problem. We're, we're not sure about that. Uh, but uh, as, as of now, it's been about a month and a half. We haven't had to pull that pump. Yeah. So that maybe was the ticket. Yeah. Moving on to the next page quick. Uh, number one would be Ruthie's and Scott's priority, not mine. Look, what's that? That new building. Oh, I didn't yeah. put that down. Mine? <laughs> 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 
go through the rest of your stuff, but I want to, and we'll come back and discuss that building. Uh, the trailer for the Mini X, uh, to drive the Mini X down to the log cabin area takes a half an hour. And, uh, I mean, I just, I did that on purpose just to see how long it takes. It takes a long time. That's from our shop. Well, I'd like to have a dedicated trailer for that so that we can keep it loaded on there and we'd have both buckets on there instead of just one bucket. And uh, um, then we can just hook up to it and go. It'd be a lot quicker and everything there. Would you use a, a, a trailer for something else though too? If you I, would, I would prefer to leave the Mini X to sit on it. And then we just hook it up. You got one for the skid loader anyway. No. Oh. No, we drive the skid loader almost everywhere. I mean, you can drive the skid loader out around the lake in 20 minutes. Yeah. It goes a lot faster. All this new one doesn't go as fast as the old one, but it, it, a lot of times we just drive the skid loader. We never load it up. Replacing the skid loader would be something that was in that contract when we purchased the last one. In my opinion, that's money well spent because well, every 300 hours we buy a set of tires and uh, and they're shot at 300 hours and uh, uh, I'm guessing right at about 1500 to 1800 dollars for a set of tires on this new one so if you cancel it out over the years I think it's actually a pretty good deal from what we they cost us to trade last time so but th and that's entirely up to you guys how you want to do that. Uh, uh, that that number is that is the the trade-in number though six thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah, with the amount. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you don't have to. You're not obligated to do that, guys. Yeah. Just we just have it down here so that it, you know it could be budgeted in. Plasma cutter something for the <coughs> shop down there. Um, I don't know if you're all familiar with plasma cutter. It's basically throwing electrons out with air compressed air rather than using oxygen and settling. Um, very handy tool, the city's run in mine several, several times. And uh, 1800 bucks, you know, it's not a lot of money, but uh, it's, it'd be a piece of equipment that we could use quite often. Did it cost us a lot of rent, that one? I think, I don't know what we were charging you. I mean, you could look at that, but it, I mean, you had it the whole time you did the all, it was there all last winter, so I don't really think we charged you just too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and hell go. Where yeah, I was, right? Yeah, <laughs> you'd like a bargain. The back of something I put down, it's way, way down on my priority list. Um, I, the only reason I put it down is because of the age, and it's, it's up to you guys whether you want to start, you know, whether you want to keep your equipment up. You know, um, My backhoe's in 1984. I use it okay. all the time, you know, so it'll last a long well, time and we've it kept it up. Not yeah. like for the snow and stuff like no, that. No, right. But we still put 337 hours on it last year, which is probably almost the most hours we've ever put on it. <coughs> and uh, I you don't say have it's been way down on my priority list. Mm -hmm. So you don't have anything on here for dump trucks? Well, um, Scott and I talked about that, and, and what we, what I'd like you to see you do is maybe start, maybe just putting a little money away each year for it. I think I can get four or five more years out of that old green at the 97, I believe. Um, but what's happening is the box, the box on the back of it is starting to rust out, and it was the same type of box that fell off the other one. So, if we, but I think we can get four or five years out of it, you know, and, and put a little money away each year for that, and I then we have the money to purchase a new one, you know. Didn't we talk about that last year? I, I know we talked about that. I don't know that uh, we didn't do anything as far as okay. as starting any specific set aside funds, but if you, we'll I'll include that on there and we'll see what we can come up with uh, about being able to fund a little set aside. Do you, do you want to go back to the building, Scott? And Little, little bit no, run through the rest of your stuff here. Quick. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Um, of course, you got your street project coming up. And that's that's already been taken care of. And um, this curb and gutter, it should be priority two, I believe. Oh. Um, if you go down by Sue Mine, you know we have some complaints down in there. Um, 
uh, going down toward the past Sparky there, there's always a workshop there. I mean, we're putting rock in that thing all the time. Uh, four or five days later, you got a hole there again, and we get complaints, you know. So I'd like to put some curb and gutter along there. Now, depending on how far the money would go, we can we can kind of decide that how far that curb and gutter should go up. Personally, if you if you took it up to um, where the water tower starts, it would be the best. Uh, but it doesn't <coughs> have to go up that far. The water tower driveway? The water tower driveway, yes. It doesn't have to go that far. Though. The, mm -hmm. the big workshop is down the hill. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so um, it's a big hole there now. All the time. All the time, Terry. I mean, it's just a constant battle. There. I go to there with the cross call. Yeah. 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 Um, Harrison Street is down by Sioux Mine. And then uh, the two blocks on Main Street are also down by Sioux Mine, would be in front of Roberts's, um, uh, that first block down there between Harrison and. and uh, well, the two yeah. blocks south of Main Street coming from the very south of Harrison Street south, uh, north. Lakeshore Drive, that's something that you guys were kind of looking at last year, I think, and, and of course it kind of got put back, but uh, I'm thinking, this is a guess now guys, I'm thinking around $80,000 is what you're looking at to start from from uh, where we left off at the mayor's when we put the new storm sewer in there mm -hmm. a couple years ago for uh, shapers. And uh, and then going to the south, all the way around the corner to is it um, Mrs. Hanson? Uh, I believe it's yeah, Hanson that lives in that oh, very end house. Olson, 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 Olson. 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 Yeah. Out the Lake Street. Yeah. And I've you know talked to Lon about that about having Lon design a process like that. What we do is is get a bid spec ready to go, and and just bid that to local contractor. Mm -hmm. But need that line get that, uh, get that I, I'm a little concerned about that doing that just because there's it's pretty detailed it's it's as complicated as an alley as what you had out there that, that we did last summer it's a very complicated alley for elevations and stuff like that you know I don't know how you want to write it up you know water has to run to the drain you know that's probably the way to write it up a <laughs> 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 yeah. good start yeah. <laughs> And then, of course, you got the intersection out there at M54. Uh, we're trying to work with the county, uh, get a little involvement out of them. Maybe we can help have them help us pay for some of that. Um, and that really is out by Mrs. Clausen's, the old bait shop, that yeah. intersection right in there. Yeah. We measured that up um, well, last summer sometime we, we, and, and gave it to my Yeah, John took it to the I county. To the yeah. county supervisor. Yeah. And and the engineer supposedly came down and looked at it. So. Okay, and, and, I, and we haven't heard nothing since I think. <laughs> <laughs> no. That corner there, too, on uh, M54, Basco's corner, where the you know, trucks always take that corner yeah. and drop off. That truck drop off there. So. Well, the bus drops off, too. Mm -hmm. you know, off the, of the highway? When you're, I think I have yeah, up when you uh, turn that one. You're going right to the west, uh, or are you going, going to the north? I'm going to the north. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I know that exactly uh, where the line oh. is down there on the end, right on the end where you turn off of uh, 175 to the north. Mm -hmm. So I always had trouble keeping from traveling. Uh, before you get too much into water lines, can you talk a little bit about the water tower and where we're at on the <coughs> Well, I called Jack Coe today. He was supposed to be here last week, which I didn't care that he didn't come because it was pretty cold out. But, uh, yeah. We uh, have been running the tower over several times. Uh, it's we don't have any way of knowing when the tower is full, right? so we're just kind of timing and guessing when the tower is full. Well, we've run it over on purpose several times, but we've run it over because we forgot to turn it off. You know, we're we doing things we forget to turn it off. But uh, uh, what we're going to do is replace the radios with this company that Jetco does all of our our computer work down there on, on our SCADA, the SCADA system. And uh, we would like it, uh, this John 
what his name is. Zeman. Zeman. I called him up to get him to come work on it. Alpha Wireless bought them out. John doesn't want to work on it. He said, you know, the system's 25 years old, guys. It's time to replace it, you know. And, and if you go down there, it's actually built in Cape Pan. And it's hung on the wall of these plywood. I mean, it's pretty, pretty arcade. But anyway, so what we're going to do is replace just what we need to replace right now, the part that isn't working. And then as radios start to fail, then we will replace uh, well 3 and well 4. Right now we're just replacing the, the water tower and the system at the, at the plant. And that's going to be a cost about $4,500 if I remember right. Mm -hmm. right. And, and uh, 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 then as, as needed we'll have to replace that. It probably won't be in the budget for it, but I'm, you know, I'm hoping it's a $4,000 or $5,000 fix each time. Uh, the replacing of the water valves, we'll be doing that right away in the spring. And uh, uh, Fifth Street <coughs> will not have to be replaced. Uh, I called Jack the other day, and he actually replaced that. With him and Jeff replaced that when I was gone one time on vacation. So uh, Seventh Street, though, there's two valves up there we're going to replace, so we're still at, at that uh, two valves. So um, um, then I've got the fire hydrants out at Provost and 30 Acres. They're leaking, but we're going to call a company that have them come up and look. Uh, Brown's Plow Ford Dodge has a, his, his boy fix his fire hydrants now. We're going to have him take a look because it would be quite considerably cheaper to have him do it if he can. Of course, replacing the five more water valves. I'd really like to uh, uh, start down here by the post office. There's three of them right in that street right there that need to be taken care of because that would isolate some of our areas, especially down that way. Um, you know, we have uh, 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 Turner Systems exercise mode valves, and I have the records on, at the, in the office down there, and it'll, it, he counts how many turns they, they go, so we know which valves we need to fix. So That's something we put on there every year, it just seems like it doesn't ever get done. Of course, we all know about the lagoon project. Major, major deal. <coughs> the uh, just the, the little update on that is that our anti degradation analysis has been approved, and um, the, uh, it's just something that the engineer kind of did behind the scenes. But but it ends up being one of the important approvals of the process, and this needed to happen before you could continue on with anything else. So that's that's been approved. And kind of on to the next step. So we're at 30 acres. I've actually contacted Pete Howell. They haven't gotten back to me yet. Uh, they're trying to schedule us in. Um, we tried to do that last year. We had no frost. We buried the truck out there. And, and uh, this year we should be able to get out there and uh, take care of that, clean that sewer <coughs> out, and then we'll have the televised as, as soon as we get that done. Continue lift station upgrades and maintenance. It, it takes 20 grand a year just to just to do it, just to you know, <coughs> just to keep it pumped up. I mean, we've got one down at the sewer plant right now, ten thousand dollars. Well, we're just going to try and limp it along. And hopefully, we can make it a year and a half, and two years, and go with it. New roof at the water plant. Pretty bad shape, guys. And we're leaking here pretty quick. But um, in the past, the city has done that. But now we're into the, this water plant. Be a little bit different situation because we're going to have to take all the siding off and everything to even tie it into the other roof. Only the only the top roof, the high roof, needs to be replaced right now. But it wouldn't hurt to. It seems why we're doing it. Let's just do the whole thing and then it's all updated. Well, the city did in the past, but if you're going to tear off, so who do you put Well, I say you put it up with bids and have a contractor do it. You know, do it with the deck or shingles like we've done everything else. It's a 50 year shingle. We should never have to do it again. You know, we'll have a new plant there before you have to replace shingles. And then deck or shingles have held up real well so far. I mean, 
been a pretty good deal. Very good. I wonder what else you want to talk about. <coughs> you want to talk about the building. And it's really the only thing in the back about the building is, is that aerial photo. Um, you know, this came out of out of our, our planning session last year about the mission having more storage down around the shops. And it started off thinking maybe we want to have some additional cold storage. And over time, this thing has, has kind of morphed as, as Lon and Bill have, have looked at that, kind of done some analysis about good areas and then really what their, <coughs> what their wants and desires are. And they, that's why you have the, uh, the aerial photo there. What this would propose is to say that uh, the preferred location for ease of construction is actually there at those bins. And the bins, bins could be removed and then the uh, a new building could be built there. That building is proposed at about 70 by 120, which is bigger than the existing shop. Okay, with the idea being um, there that, that basically you, you build that one, the electric would end up in this new shop. Mom would have would have the old shop have enough area for storage of their own equipment in, in each one of their shops. Both of the shops then being insulated and heated. Uh, you know, <laughs> that's that's taken a taking a turn from where we started well, if we were looking at cold storage. And that's where we were looking. If, if, if this this uh, closet next to the old shop or, or the newest shop is, uh, that's heated anyway. And what, you know, if you take, yeah, that's always been heated. And, and uh, so, <coughs> yeah, it's a hell of a lot of heat going out of there. And we think if you put a new shop up, I bet you can heat the new shop cheaper than you can just heat that one closet. The reason we kind of picked that site, guys, is it, when we built the last shop, we hauled about four foot of dirt in there. And this site, there, there won't be a lot of dirt prep to do. Uh, um, and the fact that we can keep things in that closet until the new building is built and then kind of have a transition of moving things over. Who's been? The, uh, yeah, so the bins are owned by Jim Stock, and he has leased land from the city for decades. Um, and he pays us a little bit then every month on, on this uh, land. Uh, we have been under agreement with him on it. Uh, the agreement is, is actually expired, but we just continue to bill him every month for it. And he pays us the same rental fee that he's paid for, I would say, decades about about renting this little, little bit of land. Uh, I've talked with Jim. Extra dollars. Yeah, something like 60 bucks a month. But these bins, these two bills, they're no problem. I mean, they used to have little cranes to, <laughs> to move with a tire up in there and pull, lift them up. And we, that's where we lifted our bins like that in, into the car. Yeah, I, I, I will just relay my conversations with Jim. And I've talked with him twice now. and. He's just not at all excited about about the city utilizing that space. And it, you know, he says that he uses those bins and would like to continue to use them and would prefer that the city look at another site. It would be a big hardship from Jim Stock. He is a struggling business person. It would be a big hardship from Jim. What would you do with the old closet so once you, you eventually tear them down anyway? <coughs> That was a game plan. The, the one that we use is completely rusted out. I mean, you can walk in there anytime you want to. No, we don't need ours. I was going to say, no, no, no. That took 500 gallons a week. And we used to heat that. that. And we used to heat that shit. Just fill it up every week. But it, it never got above 32 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> So you say you got to haul in a bunch of dirt? <coughs> How much would you have to haul in? Well, four foot. Four, and by 
know, it's got to be bigger than that footprint. It's gonna, you know, you're gonna have to have some back slope from it too. And but this would be seven thousand square feet. You're looking at more than seven, almost eight thousand square foot for a building, eighty four hundred, I believe it is. You know, four foot. It's but this building is going to take this part wouldn't be a safe fit. No, this is 120. These quantits are 90 foot long. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's why we're actually adding an extra 20 foot to that building because Time Bill gets all his stuff in there. Uh, I believe the insurance company wants the transformers in too. Is that correct, Bill? Mm -hmm. So it, it eats up the building pretty fast. Mm -hmm. So this is Bill's got his stuff in here. Bill was in the first one and I'm in the, the second one here. Wait, is it the same deal if you put it on this side uh, over here? Right here, it's down in here. Okay. Yeah. If it would be the same yeah, you'll have to do some dirt work, not quite as much. I mean, just so we can get the water to run away from the building. But, um, but I mean, this was just something we came up with just because it was the cheapest way to go, we thought. Right. Uh, we're not <coughs> trying to push Jim out or anything. It was just, you asked us for ideas and- Sure. And- uh, Add it on this building now, Jim. You're probably gonna need about six foot of dirt right down in here. And and this building is designed to add on to the building. Yeah. Uh, I believe it was anyway. Does this give you much uh, complication from a little bit once in a while since it is don't wouldn't you agree bill for getting your trucks back in and stuff and well right there's the augers and stuff and there's mm -hmm. there's them sitting you know <coughs> so so what you're telling me on this building that's sitting there that the newest one that was set up at one time to add on? Is that kind I of think it was built, if I remember right, it was built to add on, but I'm not sure about that. I could do some checking on it. Um, that was Wick's father, Jefferson, that put that up. But it really went past it. You could have a Well, I, I think what the deal is, is one, the one. rafter on the very end, whether that's strong or not, they might have to take that one out and put a different rafter and move that one to the end. Uh -huh. Well, they'd probably just get rid of it now. but. Uh, we're, this building's only 60 foot wide, we're proposing 70 foot because if we get Bill's trucks back to back, there is no room to walk around the back side of them. And he would like the place for storage of his electrical equipment, then they can just walk back behind, load the truck, and, which makes a lot of sense. So you don't think they would be able to put a 70 foot wide building on here? Um, I'm wondering about the pitch of the roof. Yeah. Because then you start losing head space as you, but you're going another 10 foot. But I'm, I'm thinking that was a, I think it was a 212 pitch or a 112 pitch. I'm not really sure. So you're only losing, if you go out 10 foot, you're losing a foot. Is that something oh, you're losing more than that? The 30 inches, if I'm figuring in my head right, the 30 inches. So then you're down to a, you know, less than a 14 foot wall on the back side. Well then, if, if we're gonna move the transformers in, I think Bill had talked about maybe getting some shelving like you guys use, and we could put them transformers and back them up and that, to better utilize the space. So you're saying that's 14 foot high? This, the side walls right now are 16 foot. Okay. But if you add, well, if you add 10 foot and it's on a two, uh, that'd be 20, 20 inches you'd lose if it's a 2% flow or a 212 flow. Well, I'd like that's a rough figure, and I'm, I'm not sure it's a 212 pitch. So, so what, what kind of cost savings, you know, if you got tax going on this other building, is there some savings on, on that with that wall, or how does that work out? I, I really don't think it'll be, it'll cost you more. I really think it'll cost you more. Really? I, I'm, I'm not sure about that, but I bet it would. Because then, there, then you're, especially if that rafter isn't made right to add on, then they have to redo that. Unless you leave that wall and they add, I, 
I don't know. Not, Is there somebody you could talk to that could? Oh, I could call that company up. I think they're still in Jefferson. Where yeah. out of Jefferson, have them come up and take a look. The due diligence just to see if that would. Um, if you go out 120 foot, is that going to come into play with this other guy's building? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking there, Jerry. You look at the white building in the lower left. Yeah. Okay, the property lines aren't on the photograph, aren't necessarily right. You see the property line there, the blue property line runs right through this building. Okay, now that's going to be off a little bit on this on this aerial photo. So yeah, um, because there's a pole, you can see the shadow of that pole. That's yep. his northeast corner yeah, right. of his property line. Oh. That's why I'm thinking it, it won't go there. Yeah. It, do you guys see that telephone pole there? Right here? Uh, right there. Yeah. 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 The big thing that we thought with putting it over here is the fact that we could util utilize the quantity. You guys need to walk in there and just see how much is in there. I mean, it's standing room only. You ain't gonna get nothing else in them. I mean, we're stepping over stuff. You mean so utilize the funds? Like utilize them until we got no, until we got the new building built, and then you can remove the old closets and and uh, they take them both out. Uh, well, I think that's the game plan anyway. They, well, these are all cement, so you can yeah. get the parts and the yeah. How long will the project like that take? Then? I think they can build, you know, well, the last time they did it, I believe it took them about a month or a month and a half. And they had to have it done by October, I believe it was, but they didn't get it done by then. Uh, in fact, the floor froze in one spot and they had to cut the floor back out and redo it. And, uh, so, your concern is the stuff that's in there sitting outside? Well, you can't let it sit outside. You, you can't let Bill stuff sit outside. I mean, we're gonna bring in a reefer, and, you know, yeah. rent a reefer and put them in reefers. Yeah, you could, 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 you, you, you could put it in this other building, building for a temporary time. The new the new shop. Yeah, there's absolutely no room. There's no room in there. You'd have to have trucks sitting outside to do that. Every every foot of that building full. I just thought we were going to tear the closet down, just temporarily rent reefers, put the inventory in the reefer so you can lock <coughs> it up. Then when the new shop's built, you put it in the shop. You, you move it twice, but you don't want to bother Jim Stock, and that's probably your, your second best option. Then the insurance will go right in line with it. Yeah, right. Because it's six. Oh, 20 foot cover. Well, out of the water, you're not messing with Jim Stock. These are just suggestions we're kicking around here. So, so I'm just trying to. That seems like a. To me, you're getting rid, rid of the quantity, too. You know, that's one thing. Well, I think either way, you're going to get rid of the quantity. Right, yeah. Right. Okay. If, as you look at them quantities, if you go 70 feet, that's basically going to entitle that footprint that's there with the quantity. Because mm -hmm. I believe those buildings were like 30 feet. Mm -hmm. And and uh, I'm, I'm wondering, is it going to be an issue with the next quantity over <coughs> to get stuff out of there? It, I haven't measured that. I think you're talking about taking the commercial. Well, there's one more building there. There's still a commercial closet yeah. down there yeah. that isn't in the picture. All right. Now, if we put the new building in there and we raise that dirt up there, are we going to be able to raise that dirt up that high and get past that other closet, or are you going to have to remove that closet? What well, time that chase that closet? That's fine. They're, they're all what, 1930? They paid seventy-five dollars each for them. Oh, wow. serious, they did. Are they depreciated out? No, <laughs> but it's, it's still needed, you know, as far as the like, You know what it sounds to me like? Water tower. As a guy tried to clean up, <laughs> get rid of it. Yeah, mm -hmm. If you think about that, North Wall Quanta, just know that it's full. You know, well, all of those water flows and everything gets stored in there and everything for water flow. I mean, it is huge. It's totally packed. C could you rent, could we rent? 
rather than putting it in the reefers or, or whatever, even the closet of the carnival, could you rent Larry's building that he doesn't use? Larry Nelson? The one right down the big building? Yeah. No, well, that building or the one up down. I don't think he's putting any grain in them. Uh, maybe he does have them full, I don't know. When I talk to him every year, he says he's got to clean something up before we can use them. Yeah. Okay, well, there you go. But that, that big one down there is usually empty. He's got hay in there, don't he? Or the tractors and pretty stuff. much full of his stuff. Yeah, there you go, Steve. So that's out. Yeah. Well, we don't need, certainly don't need any decisions. Not, not going to make any decisions. But you certainly have to decide, first of all, before we do anything, to report it and how we're going to fix it. Yeah, I, I have some concerns yeah. about the funding um, that I'd like to address whenever you're ready. Go ahead. Um, you know, if you, if you need them, the maintenance that, you know, certainly that's an issue. And I just have some concerns about the type of funding that I think is being proposed. Um, I just have a few handouts here. I want to thank you for letting me talk. I know that I've been talking a lot lately. But, you know, I, I, I truly care about this community or I wouldn't care what you do. Um, I have learned a lot about TIF. Um, oh, and when Scott first oh, tried okay. to give me a one-on-one uh, -on, -one on it, I've done a lot of research on it. So I just pulled off. There's so much information, and the code is on there. There's so much information about TIF. But I have some concerns about the plan to use TIF financing for the, for the building. Um, um, the projects that are in our urban renewal plan are legal under Iowa law, but as Scott has previously pointed out, the use of TIF funding for a city maintenance facility is not recommended by our state legislature. Um, do we want to come under that scrutiny and be the poster child for misuse of TIF funds? Um, if you feel you need a maintenance shed, which is, which is you know, obviously, um, an ongoing concern. I mean, you have to have facilities for your stuff. I just hope you'll opt for another form of funding. It, in the urban renewal plan, it is tied in with um, enhancing corridor highway 175. There are some funding grants for that through Iowa Living Roadways and Trees Forever as far as I'm not exactly sure what the plan was for the beautifying the corridor, but um, TIF funding started in the 50s and 60s. It was for blighted areas. Then it kind of moved into economic development. And there is some use of it for low to middle income housing. And um, you know, it, it takes the money away from the school and the county, and it brings it into the city. And then it's um, put into a separate fund, and then when that loan is paid back, then that money, that increased taxation starts going to the school and the county again. Um, you know, where we have it here is Evapco, and we have it out at Boulder. Um, both of those facilities um, raise the tax levy, so the, the amount of taxes increase. The difference is what we get in here into TIF. Um, and that enables you to do projects and perhaps, you know, the long run down the school and that don't get the, the immediate result, but they do get it later on. So when that 20 year plan is up, then the school gets higher taxes and so it's a good thing for them too. This project won't result in any of that. There will be no increase in tax valuation if you take all of your TIF money and put it into this building. Um, the expansion of Lakeview Lumber to erect a new building to put in a hardware is actually an example of where we could have and should have used TIF funding in this community. You know, we could have offered them sidewalk, maybe sewer brought in. I mean, that's what, that's what TIF is for, is to help the community grow through economic development and increase your business increase your revenue, increase your taxes. Um, and I, I, you know, I'm kind of disappointed that that wasn't offered to the lumberyard because um, I certainly think them 
making of the financial commitments that they're making to this community is huge. Um, and I hope that the decision to use TIF funds for this project is not an effective way to stop the other projects that are in the urban renewal plan because it kind of looks to me like that's what it's going to do. Um, the one thing I wanted to make a note was um, um, you would hope that Lakeview would use the TIF funds for economic development that would either increase your tax revenue or it would bring people into your community to spend money or it would be a facility that the residents are going to be able to use and this project accomplishes none of those things to me this is a normal expense that you would come up with doing business as a city <coughs> and you can fund it through normal funding um, procedures um, I, I, I just think this is really an inappropriate use of TIF funding and I think it'll be frowned upon by the state legislature. Um, and I and if you if you don't have any other way to do this, then I wish you'd put it to a community vote. Let the community vote if that's how they want to spend their economic development dollars, because it pretty much cuts off all the other projects. So thank you for your time. It won't have anything to do with the way it looks when you come over to buy that. We're working on that. But there, there is other funding uh, available to, to do this building, right? Yeah, for this building? Yeah. I mean, what we would look at is is traditional city financing mechanisms, which would be either property taxes or the other one that uh, would be available is the local option sales tax. And just running the analysis on kind of that money that's not earmarked for anything on sales tax, there's about $113,000 that's not earmarked for anything right now. So we do have uh, lots of other smaller projects that are earmarked to come out of sales tax, but there's just $113,000 <coughs> that's not. And that can, could be, uh, you know, all, all or part of that could be used for a project like this too. The community here can have 30000 for the way. Yeah. So there, we have, <coughs> past couple years we've put 10000 dollars a year into this what we call the public works building but it's just a into this maintenance facility so it has 20,000 right now 30,000 at the end of the fiscal year. Anybody got any ideas what this building would run you know or a couple of options you know that's what we talked about. I priced the 60 by 90 um was 67,000 dollars 25,000 plus 25,000 to put it up and that was no concrete. So could there could be a chance for that if you could talk to the people over Jefferson just to see what what if that's a feasible thing to add on to there? You know, I, I, I have no idea. I'm just so <coughs> could be an idea to but be, well, I don't think we can keep in the property line adding on to that building.
then maybe it could have been sidewalks or something on public land, but that was Can't that area be moved? Can't be can't it be rezoned? It's rezoned, yes, ma'am. It's it's just it's an amendment process of working through the And how long would that take? Took a month last time. To rezone? Why wasn't that there? Put it in the TIF zone. Okay. Maybe it should have been put in the TIF zone. Yeah. That's what we did here. Well, we've yeah, we've done that. <laughs> we've amended it four times. Yeah. Also know that we paid the legal bill on that last time it was thirty six hundred dollars for the amendment process. How can the lumber yard not be in the TIF zone but the new building is when the building's behind it? We added that 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 specific property was added during this last amendment. It you know, if you look at the map the map it probably looks like a hot spot <laughs> property. Where are the TIF zones? The, the original one is Evasco. And then think of uh, Black Hawk Marine and around to the hotel. Yeah. Okay. That, that was added on, a, on an amendment. A bunch of uh, street right of ways and parks land was added on amendments. And that was done when we, when we did the uh, uh, streetscape. Okay, so there's a lot of some street right of ways that were added. And then this last amendment added the shop property and the city hall property. Well, at that time, we could have added the lumber. <coughs> True. I mean, we could have added that. That is proper, yeah. We could have added that business section. I don't mean just the lumber yard, but that, no, there's businesses that have run that whole block and a half. Or it's, you know, Anything within that urban renewal area is going to be within that tip area, and it starts to affect how property taxes are are received from the area. It would all come in as tip revenue. You don't necessarily want any more in your in an urban renewal area than what what you would utilize as as real um, true tax abatement project or uh, excuse me tax uh, tip project. There's a grant. <laughs> That's the free double. Something to look for. Better news than TIF. I think we need to get more numbers. Oh, yeah. I, I agree.
Yeah, 33A. That means I missed numbers when I was going through the third set. So here's a proposed timeline to work through for budget preparation. Um, do you see that, that today we're doing all the inventory needs assessment? We're going to go right there. We'll have a draft of a capital improvement plan to start to discuss at the next council meeting. And then we'll, we'll kind of start uh, putting some of the numbers to it and, and where any of the funds could come from to, to look at uh, supporting everything in the capital improvement plan. Uh, for the past several years, we've done this, this council goal setting session. And uh, this had proposed that at, Jan at January 9th. If we look at moving that to maybe the 23rd, what's that do for Pardon me? How do we know that? <laughs> what is that? I mean, really? It's, it's another Monday, you know. Oh, wow. My Mondays are usually free. That's Where, why are we moving it? It, work, it works well for Jerry. Jerry's going to miss it otherwise. Okay. And, and we'll talk dates for reunion now. So just put the answers on Thursday.